this is a hot topic for a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to go to church and for whatever their reason is I'm not speaking for everyone and I'm not speaking for just a few I think I'm speaking to a large crowd but it's not everyone so take this as you want this is my point of view my point is here is church is not and this can be referenced in the Bible church is two or more people that are speaking the word they're speaking of God they're having a lesson they're attempting to learn or to better themselves in the word what's in the Bible what's in Christ and a lot of people get stuck on these these big churches or even these little bitty hometown churches that their parents went to and maybe they were raised Southern Baptist or Baptist or Pentecostal or non-denominational, whatever. It doesn't matter. A lot of people associate the word church with a structure. The most important thing to remember, and again, this is my humble opinion that has been influenced from words directly in the Bible, is it's two or more people that are speaking doesn't say two or more people that's in a a concrete building or a structure a tent a car it doesn't matter it's two or more people speaking finding out more about Christianity it doesn't say they have to be studying the the word from Google they don't have to be studying the word from uh, a college that's full of accurate literature or NIV or King James Version, it doesn't matter. It's just two more people talking about Jesus. Now, you can take that sentence and change it a hundred ways and say, well, if they're talking negatively about Jesus, you know, you can view it however you want. Um, the gist of this conversation is don't think that you can't be a Christian because you don't go to church. I don't go to church every Sunday. I would love to. Uh, you know, we work six days a week and we're supposed to have that seventh day to to not work and to focus on Jesus Christ even more, even though we should be focused every day. I feel that people get very focused tunnel vision. They are just lined in on the fact that they only go to church on Sunday and they're going to church to meet God or to visit God, to see God. Let me tell you something, and I hope I speak for a large majority. You don't have to go to church to meet God. God is not only at church. God is everywhere. We are the church. It's very simple, and I think nowadays especially people take simplicity and they change it into a blown-out situation. You can take something as simple as we are the church, and it can be convoluted, it can be viewed in so many ways, good and bad, pros and cons. But the bottom line is, is we are the church. View it how you want. Read the Bible, whatever version you enjoy, whether it's King James Version or whether it's an older version, whichever. And to go down a, a little rabbit hole here, which I always say I'm not going to go down rabbit holes, but I love a good rabbit hole. This brings up a very, very good topic of King James Version. Some people, they see that or they see another version of the Bible and they think, well, this has been changed and translated and words are lost in translation or meanings, etc. But here's an interesting fact that I think can help you understand the King James Version or other versions compared to King James. This this is my knowledge. I'm not 100% correct on this. And if I am, that's great. But the King James Version originally, I believe it took approximately 66, let's see, there's 66 chapters in the Bible, or books. It took approximately 66 years for scholars and all these educated people that were basically appointed by the king to change the Bible over, to translate it. Uh, let's find another word to, some would say manipulate, but 
I, I'm a firm believer that text can be modified and you can get the same meaning. And I, I do not know 100% the background of the King James Version or NIV, the Old Testament, whatever you want to call it or reference. I don't know the answers to all of it and I'm still learning myself. But I know this much, people can say that they don't want to get into it because it's confusing or they don't know what to read, what's right or what's wrong. I will tell you this much and I'll lean into this more with sin. I think as long as you are looking for Christianity, you're looking for the literature of it, you're looking for that meaning in your life, you're trying to find who is God, who is Jesus Christ, and how are they a part of my life or a part of someone else's life so maybe you can be influenced or maybe you're trying to influence someone else by spreading the word. I personally don't care where you read it or learn it. Uh, and I'm, I would imagine that God doesn't care either. I'm pretty sure he'd be proud that you're stepping out and trying to spread the word and trying to educate yourself. It's just like right now. I'm not certified to be making these videos. I'm not a preacher. Uh, I w I've never been called upon to preach, but I feel like I've been called upon in my heart to just talk right now. I'm in the car by myself for an hour commute, and I could be jamming out to the radio. I could be listening to, you know, some satellite radio and all this good stuff, jamming out. And no, I'm, I'm recording a video. The sun's blinding me in my eye, and... I'm sitting here trying to talk a conversation that people can learn from and not learn from me, but be influenced in the fact that they can learn from the Bible. That's the ultimate goal. So don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone, do a little research, get your feet wet in the sense you don't have to be baptized to read the Bible. You don't have to be forgiven of your sins to be interested in who Jesus Christ is or God. You don't have to know that Jesus Christ was God's only son and he sent him to this earth to die on the cross for all of our sins. You don't have to know that. But trying to learn is an amazing step in the right direction. And that leans me into the conversation of sin. And it should probably be a sin for me to wear this undershirt. Sorry, it looks ridiculous, but this is my my undershirt for work and I can't wear my uniform on camera so you know there's you a little bit to think about but here's here's my thing with sin and I've talked to a lot of people about sin and I've read the Bible and tried to learn a lot about sin and I haven't read every word in the Bible I'm still working on it so this is my humble opinion my point of view on sin I know that I sin every day it's a shocker I know I sin, I cuss, I judge, I look um, envy I'm very envious some days, some days are worse than others uh, it's embarrassing uh, and I'll sit there and judge people and it's sad and uh, I have to work on it but every sin is held accountable, they're equal and people get so wrapped up that, well, hold on, you're a sinner. You're doing this, you're doing that, you're cussing. You just dropped the F-bomb. But yet you're trying to tell me about Jesus Christ? Well, I can tell you wholeheartedly that through my sin, I have become a more educated Christian. And I think personally that some of the best teachers or preachers or influencers of Jesus Christ and Christianity are people that have sinned and everyone has sinned. There's not a single person on this earth other than Jesus Christ himself that has never sinned or doesn't sin. And another interesting thing to think about, and I highly recommend myself and others to do more research to get a better understanding, is all sin apparently is equal. So if you think about that, you can sit here and say, well, and, you know, the United States of America, if you rob a bank, it's the consequences are different than, let's say, I'm going to go to the extreme, just throwing it out there. Let's say uh, rape or murder or uh, God, 
like like a child crime or stealing you know that goes with robbery you can look at all the seven deadlies or you can look at all the crimes in the United States of America which varies state to state and you can you can look at all these things there's some state where it's illegal to put a penny on a railroad but breaking the law it can be viewed as a sin so are all these sins equal well they're not equal in a uh, a justice situation a court of law or you know constitutional purposes you know it's a law that's being violated but all sin is equal from what I've read in the Bible and you can be forgiven of your sin it's, let's say you get arrested for robbing the bank and you get convicted you're guilty boom felony and you go to prison and then you ask forgiveness of your sins you're not just gonna boom pop up out of that prison you gotta serve your time but in the word of Christianity asking forgiveness of your sins that's that's the biggest thing you can do and besides spreading the word of Jesus Christ to others I ask forgiveness of my sins almost every day and I'd love to say I do it every day or every moment I don't but I have unfortunately created a habit of and this sounds terrible but hear me out I've created a habit of praying while I'm going to sleep before I go to sleep and uh, I even remind my wife I'll say good night love you say your prayers just a polite reminder and Lord there's sometimes that I need the reminder but my point to this is habit praying is not I'm not saying it's wrong or it's right um, I love to pray with purpose I may have a habit of reminding myself to pray every night but I strongly believe that I, I try to pray with purpose and whether it's praying for my neighbor or which I have done or praying for someone that I don't like which I've done you know love thy neighbor and it's so simple just pray and uh, I think a lot of people are afraid to jump into Christianity or to say that oh I'm a Christian or to even talk with people in public talk to strangers and say I'm a Christian are you you know, or you know what's your view on Christianity do you know Jesus Christ it's super awkward bringing that up in public people don't like being uncomfortable and some people do most people in my experience I work with the public every day and I've been trained on communicating with the public and interacting and I serve the public but there's times that I want to bring up Jesus Christ and it's not it's not allowed in my job and it's not something that's usually taken very well um man it's hard it's hard to find words to describe it advertising christ is frowned upon and it shocks me and i feel like some days that's why we're in the situation we're in in this world and you know there's there's people everywhere that advertise christ every day and they live a, a wholesome life and you know keeping keeping their sin in check and asking forgiveness of it and they love jesus and they spread the word and you know, they, they're, they may not change the world, but they may change one person. And this world is not heaven. This world is not hell. We haven't got there yet. So I firmly believe that uh, it's it's one of, it's something to think about. And the Shriners are out asking for money. I always wonder if, if they're actually real. Side note, sorry. But... It just makes me wonder how many people step out of their comfort zone and go to a church or ask somebody about Christianity and change their life or how many people just sit there afraid because they don't know. They don't know the answers. They don't know the questions to even ask to get an answer. But that brings up another thing that I'd love to talk about is how many children or special needs, children or adults, both, whichever, or how many people that, let's say, for example, have lived in a culture or on an island, and there's people out there that do. People, let's say, that are of a native culture, someone that is, their whole life, they've never even heard of Jesus Christ. They've never heard of God. 
there are people out there that exist like that. It's shocking. It's hard to believe. It's true. What? Where do those people go if they've never asked forgiveness of their sins or if they never even knew what a sin was? And through studying the Bible, and again, this is my interpretation of it, I believe by the teachings in the Bible that I've read and learned from, these people will still go to heaven not knowing does exist and that doesn't eliminate them from going to heaven. Let's say children. Maybe you have a child that's passed away and maybe you're you know, you're questioning and you don't know. You know, you got a toddler or something or a child, someone, a, a juvenile, let's use that word, and they were never introduced to Jesus or they were never old enough to comprehend it, I promise you, they're in heaven and you can meet them there. As simple as putting your faith in your heart in Jesus Christ, knowing what happened to Jesus, Him dying on the cross for our sins, as I drive past a cross in a tree that's been there a long time. And you can you can reassure yourself that with believing in God and Jesus Christ and, and loving the Father and the Holy Spirit, and you put yourself on a path of righteousness, asking forgiveness of your sins and living a, a fruitful life for Christianity. You don't have to advertise it every day, every moment. And you can just be good in that sense of you're a Christian and you understand where you're at and you understand forgiveness and you've asked forgiveness. I firmly believe you'll go and see them. And who knows? Maybe this is a moment that one viewer hears this video and maybe it puts something into context for them. Um, I met some people today and I really hope they're watching. They were nice people and uh, I have a funny story about them and then we'll wrap this video up. They were, well, let me start over. This morning I was speaking with some coworkers about a belt and I had heard about a belt that's made in America and it has a magnetic buckle on it. And I was kind of excited about it because, you know, I like stuff like that. And it's hard to get a decent belt anymore if it's not, you know, you know, real leather. And uh, I heard about the belt and, and I heard from it. It was on a Christian podcast and I was really interested in it. So it was as simple as that. So I get to work and somehow a conversation comes up about this belt. And I'm like, ah, let me tell you about this belt, you know. And I go down that path of conversation and it gets to the point of the conversation is forgotten. So the day goes on. I'm in a different position at work throughout the day. And some uh, people come in, just you know, normal people. They're coming in to where I'm working and somebody has a belt. We see the belt and a coworker addresses the belt and says, hey, that's the belt you were talking about. And it was. It's super odd that that happened but uh coincidence i don't know so we get to talking about it and they're like how did you find out about the belt i said i'll watch a christian podcast and they immediately knew the podcast that i was talking about and it was super cool it was just a cool moment and that conversation ended but on the end of that conversation was a beginning of a new conversation that was jesus christ and i told them my side of Jesus Christ, which is super short, you know, we're just talking, and I was able to explain to them about my channel right here that I'm trying to do and spread the word and work on cars and influence people in a positive way, and uh, it was just super cool to get that, that little conversation. My point to that is, is God's plan is so amazing, we can never fully understand the plan. He has a reason. He has a way for everything. He's the way maker. Listen to Christian music and hear how many times people reference him as the way maker. And Lord, the sun's blinding me in my eyes right now and I don't know why I'm, the Lord knows I'll say that. But you can view it in a positive way, a negative way. You can question it or you can concur with it that God has a plan that we don't understand and something as simple as a conversation about a belt led to us talking about Christianity. 
and it was a husband and wife and their kids and they both they all seem to be you know Christians and knew God but who knows if one of their children was just like questioning it and maybe hearing a stranger's point of view put them put them on a, a good path and uh, even though their parents have probably told them a hundred times about Jesus Christ you never know but on that end of the conversation I'll say this the whole point to this video was to remind people or to tell someone that may not know church is not a structure there are structures that hold church and there are churches within structures however you want to view it the literature of it you are not required to be in a building it's an amazing thing and i love going to church and i highly recommend it and it's a place where i have gained a lot of knowledge and information on jesus christ Christianity overall and I'm so thankful that I have but on the same note if you've never been to church and you don't want to go to church that may be fine for you as long as you're studying the word read the Bible speak with people speak with people spread the word have the conversations you know, being comfortable is easy. Being uncomfortable is hard. But being uncomfortable can put you in a position that can change your life or change someone else's life. And it's something to remember. It's not easy to hang on to those words. But through this learning process, trying to find out what is Christianity, who is God, who is His only Son, Jesus Christ, are they the same? Are they different? Those are questions you're going to have. And reading the Bible and talking with people will answer those questions. The Bible is there to show you and direct you. It's like an owner's manual for yourself. You know, this, this vehicle I'm in, it's a Lincoln. It's a hybrid. I've never owned a hybrid. I was nervous to buy it. I did a lot of research. And I even tried to find factory owner's manuals online before I bought this vehicle. You know, just I'm a little nerdy like that. But my point to that is, is maybe you should do the same. Look up the Bible, whatever version it is. If it's incredible, it's you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be just fine. Step out of your comfort zone. Ask somebody. If you don't want to buy a Bible, if you don't want to go to the library and read one, or you don't want to go out of your way, you know, just ask somebody. Talk to somebody about it. And in that moment, multiple people discussing God, discussing Jesus. That's church. It's that simple. And you know, to end the whole video right here, I'm sitting here talking to this camera as awkward as it is. And I am so uncomfortable. It's not even funny. And I hope that somebody watches this video the whole way to the end and they can relate. This is the most uncomfortable thing I've ever done in my life is... And y'all don't even comparing that to back in high school when they, they make you squat and cough and all that stuff. I am so uncomfortable in advertising, but at the same time, I'm so thankful that I got the courage to do it and then I've read the Bible and I have a little bit of knowledge and faith. That's gonna be the next episode, faith. But I'm so thankful that I have that and I have the ability to sit here with an iPhone and shout out to apple for a great camera i'm not you know not sponsored but i love having the ability to record myself and spread the word and as of this video right now i believe there's 25 people that have subscribed to the youtube channel and i don't make a dime off of it it's actually costing me every month to record it it physically is and it's amazing that 25 people let's say 25 percent of those people watch a video and let's say another 25% of them finish the video let's just say one person out of those 25 subscribers and their family members actually watches the video and listens to the word that's one person that made this a church there's no building there's no structure there's no foundation under it but there's the Bible and there's the word of Jesus Christ the red letters what God has said and to give you a little something to think about, uh, I heard somebody question the other day, and then I'll end this video. I heard somebody question the other day that 
how is the Bible the Word of God when, or Jesus Christ, whenever there's so many parts in the Bible that are different people? Or the philosophers, let's say, for example, in the Bible, you can reference this. I don't know the verse offhand. I wish I did. Uh, I know, like, Phil Robertson or somebody or Jace from, you know, the Unashamed Podcast, they would know immediately from the conversation what I'm talking about, what I'm referencing, and I hope and pray I can get like that one day. But there's a spot in the Bible that says that the philosophers, for example, their teachings, their recordings, the transcripts, the words, all of it, is provided through God. Their word is from Him. So take that with a grain of salt. Do a little research on that, and I'm going to do it myself because I don't know all the answers to that. I don't even know the scripture offhand. But that's an amazing thing to really think about. It's almost as stunning as this sun shining in my eye and blinding me while I'm driving. That's more distracting than talking to this camera. But uh, think on that, guys. Step out of your comfort zone. Do a little something different to widen your view, your knowledge, your overall skill set of the Bible. Because I'm doing it right here and it's so uncomfortable, but there's a reason. I don't know the reason. God knows the reason. I was called upon. I felt it in my heart to step out of my comfort zone and start doing this. And there's no benefit to me other than spreading the word of Jesus Christ. And that's a great benefit. So, do the same guys check it out uh, i hope you like this video i think this is going to be my format for a while of just talking to the camera putting a video out and then other videos working on the car stuff like that so whether you like cars or you like fellowship maybe you like both i think you should check it out let me know now, I'd love to tell people to subscribe and everything. I don't have a lot of content right now. I'm working on it. I'm trying to do a video every week. And uh, I hope that that's something that can get people excited. You know, it gets me excited. And uh, I'm, I'm super proud of it. My content's not the best right now. Uh, myself and a, a co-worker have edited some of the videos. And uh, I'm super thankful for that. So, you know, if they're watching, I hope they are. Thanks again. But I'm trying to do about 99% of the videos, and uh, it's definitely challenging. So if you guys have any advice, maybe on some camera platforms or editing, anything like that, or maybe even just the platform of the videos, let me know in the comments. I'd love to read it. Uh, I've yet to get a comment, so I hope one day I can look back on this and celebrate with some people where well, we get a lot of subscribers and maybe the comments actually take off. I'd love to get people's opinions good or bad whatever so I know there's gonna be bad but hey that, that's what it is somebody's gonna argue Jesus Christ and I'm up for I'm up for the conversation I hope I can spread the word so I appreciate you guys we'll see you on the next one